Welcome back or welcome if you're new here. My name is Austin and I am a fashion and beauty content creator and freelance writer based here in New York City. And in today's video, I really wanted to talk to you guys about how to work with brands. I feel like this is one of the biggest things that I get asked about. I have been a fashion and beauty blogger for over seven years now and I have been paid to work with brands like ASOS, Primark, Garnier, Revlon, Mary Kay, Fur, and more. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how that process unfolds and what you can expect when you are working with a brand. So in this video, I'm going to address the five main kinds of partnerships that you can have with brands, how you can even go about finding these opportunities, talking through blogger networks, and what to do when a brand reaches out to you. I also want to discuss finding contacts, how can you even reach out to a brand if you want to pitch a brand yourself, and also what to do when it comes down to payment, exactly what to say to a brand if they say that they can't pay you or if they offer a rate that's lower than what you charge. I hope you walk away from this video with a really clear idea of the different kinds of partnerships partnerships you can have with a brand and exactly how you want to talk to them and approach it to make sure that you're both getting something good out of it. Before we get started, if you're not already subscribed, I would love for you to hit that red button down below. I put out new videos every Monday and Friday, and if you're interested in seeing more of my life as a freelancer here in New York City, I always am doing Q&As and vlogs and all of that kind of stuff. Please also give this video a thumbs up if you find some useful information through it. You can do that at any time during the video, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you get notified whenever I upload. So without further ado, let's get into it. To it. The first thing that I want to talk about is ending up on a brand's PR list. So this is a great way to be able to test out new products, especially for beauty brands, those of us who are focused more in the fashion and beauty space. Beauty brands are very generous with their PR mailers, and I feel like that's an amazing way to get new product in your hands and review it. So basically what being on a PR list means, in my mind, coming from more of the magazine editorial background, is that brands can send you products for editorial consideration. So that means there's no obligation to post about these brands, but rather that you'll take the time to test them out, review them, and either share your thoughts with the PR team, or maybe give them a mention on your Instagram stories if you're actually using and liking the product, or something along those lines. But there is no actual partnership laid out for any posting or anything that's required of you after you receive and test out the products. One thing that is amazing for influencers who are starting out is gifting campaigns, and I hear a lot of talk among influencers that say you should not accept free product, that it devalues the rest of the content that you do, and I definitely think that if you're more established, you do have the right to turn down gifted products, but if you're just starting out, it's a really great way to start to build a connection with a brand. The way most gifting campaigns work these days are a brand sends you a product and you can decide with the brand what you will be posting about it. So maybe it's two Instagram stories or maybe it's one in-feed post or maybe it's even a mention on Twitter or Facebook if that's their jam. But generally with gifting campaigns, the brand will clearly lay out if there is an expectation for you to post if you do receive these products. Just keep that in mind and use your best judgment. You can tell if a brand is taking advantage of you. If they are sending you one tube of mascara and are asking for a YouTube video, a Pinterest pin, an in-feed Facebook post, an IGTV video, it has to stop somewhere. All of that is not worth one free tube of mascara, but if it's a brand that you really love and have been wanting to test out and all they ask in return is for one shout out on your Instagram stories, maybe that is a gifting collaboration worth pursuing. Another way you can work with brands is through affiliate partnerships. So you guys will see that down below in the description box, I have a couple of discount codes for you all um, for different brands and companies that I've worked with and partnered with before. Sometimes it's just a straight up discount code. There's nothing in it for me. I'm just sharing it with you so that you can have a discount to something that I actually like and use a lot, but other times there are affiliate campaigns or platforms where I would earn a small commission or payout if someone actually did purchase through my link. So just to use Glossier as an example, if you use my Glossier link down below for 10% off your first order, I do get $10 in Glossier store credit. So that is specific to that brand, but that's just one example of their referral program. The fourth way of collaborating with a brand that I want to talk about is every influencer's endgame, which is to get paid by a brand to create content for them. Generally, the way that works is a brand will reach out to you and offer you a certain amount of money to create content for them, and we'll talk about negotiating your rates a little bit later in this video, but then once you agree upon a rate, you'll post something for it and you'll usually include an FTC, Federal Trade Commission disclosure, you know, hashtag ad, hashtag sponsored, and you'll kind of tell the story for that brand in a way that maybe they couldn't do otherwise, because the great thing about working with influencers is that they can add a personal touch to any campaign that they work on. 
And the last and super underrated way that you can work with a brand is to do a takeover for them. I feel like Instagram takeovers are something that people are sleeping so hard on, but it can be a really mutually beneficial relationship and a great way to create content for a brand. I find takeovers to be mutually beneficial for both the brand and the influencer, because if you're the influencer, you get to create content and appear in front of the brand's audience that might actually be a potential new audience for you. And if you're the brand, you get someone to create content for you who doesn't even work for you. So that's kind of amazing. I think takeovers can be both paid and unpaid. So if you're an influencer with a larger following and you would be doing the brand a favor by being on their channel, then I think you can charge for it. But if you're a bit of a smaller influencer and the main goal for you is exposure, then I would definitely recommend just doing kind of a trade collaboration with a brand in terms of takeovers. So now that you have a better understanding of the five main types of ways that you can collaborate with brands, let's talk about how you even find out about these opportunities. If there is a campaign, how can you apply to one? How do you get in touch with a brand and all of that? The first way that you could work with a brand is simply if they email you. And I just want to take a moment to say if you you are an influencer without your email in your Instagram bio, I would definitely go pause this video and update it right now. Even if you do have a business account and you have the email button on mobile, it does not show up on desktop and that's where brands do a lot of their research for influencers that they want to work with. So if you don't have your email in your bio, you might be missing out on many opportunities for brands to contact you simply because they're so focused on desktop and don't want to have to take the time to switch to their mobile, pull up your email and then type your email in separately, hope they're getting the right keywords, do yourself a favor and just put it in your bio. Um, I hope Instagram moves the email button to desktop soon, but it doesn't look like they're going to be doing that for a while, so definitely make sure that that is there. So a brand can reach out to you and say, hi, I've seen your Instagram, I've seen your YouTube, and I really want to work with you. And then they will usually go into detail about whether they have a paid campaign in mind or whether they wanna send you something just to hear your thoughts on it and test it out. And you can kind of navigate from there based on what your main interests and priorities are for your own blog and business. For me personally, I already receive so many products and different things each week to test out, so I might not necessarily respond to every email offering gifting, but if it is a brand that I really am obsessed with and want to work with and learn more about, I will of course ask if they want to send something along for editorial consideration, as I mentioned earlier. Another way to work with brands is to pitch them, and if you guys need any pitching help, I do have my ebook right on pitch. It's a digital seven page ebook that details how to pitch brands. Um, I even have some pitch email templates in there. There's always a link to it down in the description box so you can definitely go check it out so basically you can reach out to a brand and what I would recommend is going to them with a really specific idea saying hey I see you just released this new product I would love to do a takeover for you guys showing people how I actually use this product in my everyday life or I know it's your five-year anniversary coming up I was thinking we could do a sponsored Instagram post together if that's something that you'd be open to doing here's my media kit attached and let me know if you'd like to move forward I know it can seem a little bit intimidating, but honestly, there are so many amazing resources out there. Um, I would definitely recommend checking out Right On Pitch, but there are YouTube videos and Facebook groups and all of these things that you can turn to as resources. And the last way that you can find opportunities is through blogger networks. So a lot of my campaigns and partnerships have been secured through blogger networks. Um, a couple of my favorites are the Influence Her Collective. I've also worked with Social Fabric, and then I have accounts on Obviously, Tap Influence, and Activate. So I'll leave links to all of those down below in case you want to check any of them out. There are pros and cons to working with influencer networks. Um, usually they will take care of the finances and the communication with the brand. So that is a lot less work on your part. But Sometimes there can be some specific requirements that you have to make sure you meet, um, deadlines that you're not setting for yourself, so you just have to make sure you have room in your schedule to meet them, and there are definitely different ways to submit content for approval, and they might require a little bit more editing than if you were just working with a brand directly. But it's a great way to start out nonetheless. I really recommend looking into them and getting in the habit of applying to campaigns because with each campaign you apply for, you'll get a better sense of what the brand is looking for and you can use that whenever you apply for things moving forward. The three main ways that I would recommend reaching out to a brand are A, to go to their website. Usually if you scroll down to the bottom, there is some kind of press page or contact page. 
If you get the general info email, you could reach out to that one and just say, I'm looking for the best person to speak to about influencer partnerships. But if there is a more specific press email, or even better yet, if there's a partnerships or influencers email, that is the one that you would want to be looking for. Another great way to find a brand's contact info is to go to their Instagram page. A lot of brands do have a customer service email of some kind linked in their Instagram bio. If you don't see anything there or it's not exactly what you're looking for, you could always DM the brand and say, hi, again, I'm looking looking for the best person for influencer partnerships and was hoping you could give me the email address of someone I could reach out to. The last suggestion I have for looking for brand contacts is to join some blogger Facebook groups. Um, I am in the reward style Facebook group, That Pitch Life, The Blogging Elite, and I feel like people are always constantly in search of brand contacts and are sometimes even willing to trade for a similar one, so definitely be on the lookout for posts like that. I would definitely recommend utilizing your network of fellow bloggers, especially if there's something you can offer to them in return, because if you can find a friend and you're constantly sharing contacts, that probably means more work for both of you, so it's a win-win. Now the last thing that I want to address in this video is payment and what brands do pay and is it worth working with a brand that doesn't pay and kind of navigating that whole area of this. Here's the thing you guys, I have been blogging for seven years now, seven years since 2012 and I think the first paid campaign that I got was in 2015. So that was already three years into doing this. So if you are less than three years into blogging and you've already made money from a paid campaign, props to you because that is amazing. If you're a blogger who's just recently starting out and you're wondering why you haven't been paid by a brand yet, Honestly, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Like I said, it does take time to kind of build up your portfolio and establish relationships with brands. And if it's not happening right away, I don't think you're doing anything wrong at all. People are investing more money in influencer marketing now than they ever have before. So it's actually very likely that you could get paid even being just a year or two into blogging. But for me personally, it definitely took a little bit more time to actually start getting paid. So let's just take an example and say that a brand has reached out to you and offered to send you something on a gifting basis. So what I mean by that, as we discussed earlier, is they'll send you a product and you'll post about it and tag the brand. So if you ask for a little bit more information and maybe see if they do have a budget and it comes out that they can't pay you, I have a few different suggestions for how you can move forward. The first thing I would do if a brand says they can't pay you is honestly just to ask for feedback. What's their reasoning? Is your Instagram maybe not like their kind of aesthetic or style? Do they prefer professional photos and you do all iPhone? Do they only have budget for a certain threshold of followers? I had a brand reach out to me and tell me that they don't pay anyone who has less than 100,000 followers. So I will not be working with that brand probably until I have 100,000 followers, if and when that happens. You can also ask the brand if they could circle back next quarter. Um, most brands have budgets set out through different quarters. So right now I'm filming this and we are in June June, which is Q2, fall will be Q3, and then winter, the holiday season will be Q4. So they might potentially have budget reset at the beginning of each of their quarters, and it's totally worth asking if you can circle back when they may have more room to work with you. If the brand says they can't pay you, but it's a really cool brand that you've wanted to learn more about, and you think it'll help you build up some authority when you do go to pitch to other brands to see that you've worked with whatever big name brand that you want to be working with, you could also reach out to them and say you'd like to accept on a gifting basis hoping that you can move forward and work on paid campaigns in the future. This is a little bit of shaky ground, obviously, because not every brand is going to be able to follow through on that promise, but you could at least try it and have the experience of working with the brand. And if they see that you're so easy to work with and you deliver amazing quality content, maybe the next time they have money, they will say, hey, what about her? Let's talk to her about this. The last thing that I want to address is what to do if a brand offers you a rate that's lower than what you would normally charge. Just to give you guys a ballpark as to what to charge, I really feel like this is different for everyone and even for me personally, I feel like I don't necessarily abide by this exactly, but to give you a bit of a benchmark to work off of, there is currently a statistic floating around that says you should be charging about $100 for every 10,000 followers. So that's pretty easy to digest and I think that helps do a little bit of the math for you. I think you could raise this price if you create like really amazing high quality content or you know, if maybe your audience is really invested in one particular brand or product and they see that there's a high ROI, like if you use reward style links and everyone is constantly clicking through and purchasing that brand from you, send that to the brand and say, look, these are people who really love your product and your brand and I really feel like my rate is valid because this is the kind of ROI that you can expect from me. 
but every once in a while a brand will come back to you with a number that is lower than what you're hoping for for certain deliverables so that could mean one instagram post or one youtube video or one facebook post the first thing that i would say is think about this lower offer and think is this a brand that i want to build a long-term relationship with and is this an opportunity that could potentially get me the next job or help me get to the next place if the answer to both of those is no it's probably not worth the lower rate but if you are working with this brand and maybe it's q3 or q4 and you're saying look i'm willing to accept this lower rate for right now because i really want to work with you guys but come the beginning of next year i would love to find a way to make my normal rates work i think that's a completely fair conversation to have with the brand another thing that you can say to the brand if they offer a rate that's lower than what you normally charge is to find a deliverable that will work for that rate so if they wanted you to do a fully dedicated youtube video and youtube is very expensive requires a lot of production and kind of extra work and editing and all of that stuff and they're offering you what you normally charge for an Instagram story ask if they'd be interested in that instead just be honest with them and say for the budget that you've proposed this is the deliverable that I can offer if you'd like to still work with me on the YouTube video as originally planned this is what I would normally charge for that and if we can't make it work right now I would love to circle back next quarter and see if there's something we could do and if you want even more tips from me on how to negotiate a higher rate there's actually a whole page dedicated to this inside of right on pitch which i mentioned earlier in the video is linked down below so definitely go check that out so now you're familiar with the five main ways that you can work with brands how to find contacts where to even search for these opportunities and what to do if the brand can't pay you or can't pay you the rate that you want i really hope you guys found this video useful please leave your biggest takeaway from this video down below in the comments if you learned something new from this video i would love to hear from you what it is and if you have any follow-up questions to what i talked about today please also leave them down below as well and i will do my best to get back to everyone who leaves a comment. Thanks again for watching everyone. Hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.